1.50 in the afternoon. Almost 2 o'clock. I've been out of bed for about 20 minutes. I slept less than three hours. I literally could fall over. It's minus 37 degrees Celsius. There's a wind out there, absolutely freezing. I am 100% trapped, isolated from human connection. being broken down in any, every possible way. Mentally, physically, spiritually. This is the way they want you. There's so many ways I've been harmed by medical. There's just no way of, I'm not well enough to put the story together in any one place where it makes sense and it's easy to read and understand. I've been harmed and harmed again by medical and medical negligence, harmed by misdiagnosis, long-term poisoning, rapid short-term poisoning, horrific injury from weaning off a medication that resulted in nonstop injury for three years. Um, just ref refusal or incompetence to not I think it's more so refusal for doing proper investigative care or maybe it's laziness or sloppiness or not wanting to spend the money to do proper investigative care into the sleep issue and just bumbling and dropping the ball and not caring and never doing the, pro just, you know, making lazy assumptions that I'm not sleeping because of it's, it's, I mean, I'm not sleeping because it's anxiety. The number one, the number one thing everywhere worldwide, if a person is continually insisting they're not sleeping, the number one thing should be a sleep study. And for me, that should have happened decades ago. And they dropped the ball. I believe I've had sleep apnea undiagnosed for decades. Then when I knew I had severe, I got severe life-threatening sleep apnea, they refused to believe me just refused just it's like just stubborn ignorance i've seen with so many doctors just blatant stubborn ignorance 
if if you know stuff they don't know, then they're even more stubborn and they'll dig in their heels as deep as they can. They can't handle they can't handle a patient knowing something that they don't. They can't handle a patient researching and finding out stuff they don't know, stuff that they don't know. They can't handle you finding something out before they do. It's just ego stuff. Fragile egos. Have severe apnea. I'm stopping breathing. No, you're not. I'm stopping breathing nonstop. I'm stopping breathing. I'm sleeping one or two hours a night. No, you're not. No, you're not. You need a psychiatrist. I was left in that condition for almost a whole year, absolutely suicidal, begging and screaming, begging and screaming for an advocate, begging for someone to fight the system, help me fight my way back in there, fight for health care. There's no advocacy here. There's no advocacy. They'll lie about that. There's no one to fight for people's lives. I am literally being tortured alive. MCAS, huge MCAS storm, just literally being tortured by food, eating. Blood pressure goes through the roof. I'm calling 911. Pots. My heart rate's through the roof. Go to see an immunologist. I'm telling him, you know, benzodiazepines. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put this into words because there's someone watching my videos, and they're trying to take my channel down like they did with somebody else's channel. So I'm having a medical issue with uh, MCAS, and my MCAS is just out of control. And I'm saying such and such. This medication is a mast cell stabilizer. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That's why I'm having an MCAS flare. I've, my MCAS is out of control. No, it's not. Leaves the room, comes back 15 minutes later, angry. He's got a bee in his bonnet. Okay, well, maybe one or two of them are. Okay, now he's angry. Now he doesn't want to deal with me because I knew that such and such medications are mast cell stabilizers. This is the field that he is in. This is this is the field that he's working in eight hours a day. And he doesn't know what medications are mast cell stabilizers. And then they've got to be in their bonnet. Then they don't want to deal with you because their little ego has been injured. It's about them. It's not about people's health. It's not about health care. It's about their little egos. I'm just so sick of the bullshit. Like the games. It's all, it's a, it's a game to them. People, People are, are suffering. You know what? I am being... I I am suffering. My hair's falling out by the handful. My teeth, my bones, I'm in so much pain. I am I am being tortured. I'm in so much pain and I don't sleep. I am literally being tortured. I can't manage in my home. I, I don't have a safe, clean place to cook. I can't manage. They have refused to offer me help. They have refused to come and help. I am medically injured, and and they did this to me. I have severe nerve damage. I'm certain damage to my heart and lungs.
minus 37. I am so tired I could fall over. And now I have to sit here all day and all night. Sit here, try to occupy my time. Try to keep my spirits up till I can lay down and be tortured again for 12 hours. With no one calling, no help is coming. I do have the option of, you know, amping up the the panic and and, you know, amping up the drama and start screaming and crying and then they'll, you know, then I'll be forced more incompetent healthcare that's going to harm me. I do have that choice. I have the choice of more medical harm. Dealing with an idiot with a bull in, like a bull in the china shop, forcing some medical treatment on me that's going to harm me and slow my breathing down so that I don't wake up. I do have that, that choice. Dealing with yet one more idiot with an MD... There's no way of explaining to normal people, normal healthy people, how a sick person can be injured again and again by a dumbass doctor who's making just irrational decisions without listening, without believing, believing what the patient is saying. Making dumbass rash decisions, dumbass assumptions. This is how we end up losing our lives because doctors are not listening. They're not believing us. They're listening to that little ego, that little version of, of themselves. It's threatened by a patient that knows what they're talking about. I literally am ready to fall over. You know what? I've been treated like I have done something wrong. How dare I be sick and need help? How dare I need assistance? How dare I be horrifically injured by a doctor and be so sick that I need help in my home, that I need help with food, that I need help in the house, that I need help with laundry, that I need help with house cleaning? How dare I get injured? by doctors, and how dare I not be able to manage? How dare I need this healthcare system to come and clean up their mess? How dare I tell the truth about what has happened to me? Oxygen is low. How dare I need to get out of my house? It's almost minus 40. I need help. I 
My brain hurts. I need help with my will, and that's, you know what, that's not going to get done. My estate, all, all my assets, it's all, everything else just so fucked up, because nobody will get me help. I'm going to end up not surviving, and the finances here are just so, such a fucking disaster. All because of doctors. It's all because of medical abuse and medical negligence. My whole fucking estate. You know what the worst in the past few days have been? The worst, just the worst emotionally and mentally are a, a few people just... Just making dumb assumptions. Just because I'm talking about my estate there. All of a sudden a friend turns on me. And assumes that I have money. That I'm hiding. That I have money to spend. Because I have an estate. Lots of people have houses. And have no money. Have no access to their money. Just because I have a house doesn't mean I have any money. I don't have any money. I own a house. Doesn't mean you can't just cash it. I, I don't have any money. I'm not working. I'm low income. I don't have any money to spare. All of a sudden, a friend is making assumptions that I have money. I own a house. I don't have any cash. I can't cash in my house to get money to spend. Like, use your head. This is another homeowner talking to me like this, making a dumbass assumption like this. I have, I have my house and I have life insurance. I can't cash in my life insurance policy. I don't know how it works in the States, but I can't cash. I tried a couple of years ago. It's not doable. I have my house. I'm too ill to sell my house. I'm too ill to pack and move. I'm too ill. But a person, a friend is telling and says to me, if I'm thinking this, I'm, I'm sure everybody else is thinking the same thing about you, that you have money to spend. Oh my God, you know what? It's just evil words like that. Just, just people turning on you when you're beaten into the ground, when you just can't even cope anymore. You got friends turning on you like this. Why would friend a friend all of a sudden start to get suspicious? People are just so messed up. It's like there's nobody that's stable. There's nobody that's mentally grounded or stable. Everybody is screwed up. It's so disheartening. The, you know, this friend that I thought I could rely on to be mentally grounded and stable... And, and, you know, nobody is, nobody is well, it seems. No one in my family can think their way out of a paper bag to even realize that I'm sick.
Well, I guess this is, you know, I, when this started, I always wondered how is this going to end? Like, what's going to, am I going to have a stroke? Am I going to just not wake up? Like, just stop breathing? Um, you know, wake up one day with such bad brain damage or from low oxygen just or just continue to become more and more confused because there's ongoing brain damage from low oxygen and probably high carbon dioxide. Or just not be able to take it anymore because the pain is so great. The the just the torture or am I gonna spiral into depression and and end it that way? Just uh what how's it gonna end, you know? Or am I actually gonna get health care and they're gonna figure out what to do, how to get me to sleep, or brain surgery or a tracheostomy. They're refusing to diagnose stuff here. If you refuse to diagnose, then when you end up dying, there's no proof for the family that you were actually sick. So there's they refuse to diagnose the hypo, hypoventilation syndrome. And that's really a serious condition where, you know, your breathing is so impaired that it's not sustainable through the night, that the oxygen is so low <coughs> throughout the night. One overnight test, my heart rate was went down to 27. Oxygen, I think, was down to 72. They've refused. I've begged, you know, I need, like, uh, I know it's expensive, but I'm fighting for my life. I want oxygen tests for at least a week or two weeks. I need an overnight oximeter. They're about, I don't know, $250. The hospital has them. No, they won't do it. They'll do it for one night. One night isn't sufficient because I think sometimes my breathing is stronger than other other times. Just I'm not being taken care of. So, yeah, I've often wondered how's it going to end? I'm in so much pain. I don't think people realize what literal torture it is. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. The physical pain and crisis and distress. And my heart and lungs are in crisis. And <coughs> nerve damage and... The crisis of being 100% isolated 365 days a year. They, I think they're wait, just waiting for me to end it, you know? And I don't want them to win, but I'm literally being tortured alive. Tinnitus is really bad right now. I just feel like my body doesn't want to take breaths. I need help. I need people to come and help. I don't want abuse. I don't want further medical harm. 
I need someone to just come in and help. Not appoint, not appointments, not official bullshit. Just show the hell up. Just show the hell up and help.